Hello, dear friend. What an honor it is for me to present to you this Bible study. This is the series Gospel Parables, and today in, on our episode 93, August 21st, 2024, the topic is plucking grain on the Sabbath, or Shabbat, someone will say. <laughs> what happened as we hear in Gospel Parables? We talk about come unto me, that was the episode 92. Today we are going to be studying plucking grain on the Sabbath. The reading comes from the easy to read version, and we read, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this study. Amen. Okay, Jeho, please put the scriptures on the screen. Thank you. Matthew 12, verses 1 through 8. About that same time, Jesus was walking through the fields of grain on a Sabbath day. His followers were with him, and they were hungry. So they began to pick the grain and eat it. The Pharisees saw this. They said to Jesus, Look, your followers are doing something that is against the law to do on the Shabbat day. <laughs> Jesus said to them, You have read what David did when he and those with him were hungry. David went into God's house. He and those with him ate the bread that was offered to God. It was against the law for David or those with him to eat that bread. Only the priests were allowed to eat it. And you have read in the law of Moses that on every Sabbath day, the priests at the temple break the law about the Sabbath day. But they are not wrong for doing that. I tell you that there is something here that is greater than the temple. The scriptures say, I don't want animal sacrifices. I want you to show kindness to people. You don't really know what that means. If you understood it, you will not judge those who have done nothing wrong. The Son of Man is Lord over the Sabbath day. Well, that is the reading from Matthew. Now, what is what we find in Mark? Let's read. Mark 2, 23-28. On the Sabbath day, Jesus and his followers were walking through some grain fields. The followers picked some grain to eat. Some Pharisees said to Jesus, Why are your followers doing this? It is against the law to pick grain on the Sabbath. Jesus answered, You have read what David did when he and the people with him were hungry and needed food. It was during the time of Abiathar, the high priest. David went into God's house and ate the bread that was offered to God. And the law of Moses says that only priests eat, can eat that bread. David also gave some of the bread to the people with him. Jesus said to the Pharisees, the Sabbath day was made to help people. People were not made to be ruled by the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord of every day, even the Sabbath. Well, that was Mark. Now let's read what Luke says. Luke 6, 1 through 5. One time on a Sabbath day, Jesus was walking through some grain fields. His followers picked the grain, rubbed it in their hands, and ate it. <laughs> some Pharisees said, Why are you doing that? It is against the law of Moses to do that on the Sabbath day. Jesus answered, You have read about what David did when he, he and the people with him were hungry. David went into God's house. He took the bread that was offered to God and ate it and he gave some of the bread to the people with him. This was against the law of Moses, which says that only the priests can eat that bread. Then Jesus said to the Pharisees, The Son of Man is Lord over the Sabbath day. I know you're going to love this study. I am enjoying it so much. Let me tell you, every single opportunity that I have that the Lord gives me to teach His Word, I go to the Word to read it just like you do as a student, right? Just as a student of the scripture. And I enjoy it, reading, reflecting, and evaluating everything the Holy Spirit talks to me. And uh, I can tell you that today is going to be awesome. Get ready. If you have your coffee, enjoy it. You have your drink. Maybe you are having dinner with me tonight. I don't know. Whatever the case may be, get ready for this beautiful study. 
from the scripture. Glory to our Lord. Mwah. We love you, Lord. Well, what is the context? Well, the Lord Jesus simply kept sharing the gospel. That is everything that he was doing all the time, just going from one place to the one place to the next place, etc. You know, today you will learn what to do when you when you're facing legalistic people. Because that happens constantly, right? Well, the first thing that I want to tell you is that by walking, you will go far. You know? This is one thing, very important thing to consider. What is what the Lord is leading you to do? What is your calling in life? What are the assignments the Lord is giving you as an individual, as a part of a family, maybe in your career, perhaps in your studies, maybe as part of a church, working for a company. You have assignments. You will go as far as you can as long as you keep walking. Success, my friend, in life is about keep moving forward. And you know it. It's not a secret, right? Everybody knows that. But why is it then that many people are stuck? And I will tell you, many of those that are stuck is because they refuse to keep walking. Imagine the Lord Jesus didn't have a vehicle. Imagine cars with their conditioning in those days. Wow, the Lord Jesus will be traveling all over Euro-Asia, Africa. But no, they were walking. They keep walking. Now, while they are walking, Jesus' followers, they were hungry. That happens all the time. You know, right now here in the church, Tracy and I are working together. And earlier, I saw her going to the kitchen to get some snacks. And I heard when she was opening those tips, and I hear the crunch, and then she's chewing crunch. And why is she doing that? You could say, oh, that is disrespectful because we are about to film, my friend. Everybody has human needs. Personally, before I film, every single time I eat, Every single time. You are not asking me, but I had a good snack before I start working here today. And guess what? Correct. As soon as I finish, what do you think is the first thing I will do? I will eat. And the reason is because I'm a human being like you, like the disciples, like everybody else. We all need to eat. Of course, moderation, trying to have a good diet, etc. But what I want you to know is that The good Lord knows exactly what we need. The Lord Jesus was there, w walking with them. So he knew. But at that point, when they are walking through the fields, I want you to pay attention to this. The Lord is aware that they are hungry, but he is just watching them. Let's see what they do. Do you know that quite often that is what happens between you and the Lord? He knows about your needs, but you know what he's thinking? Let's see what is what he will do. Let's see what she will do. Because it's easy just to ask, right? Just to say, I want this, I want that. Or like some people used to say in these days, I'm hungry. They don't even ask, could you please share with me a piece of bread? No, I'm thirsty. I mean, this is such a childish way of communicating. No. But the Lord knows what is what you need. But He is watching you. Some people simply don't want to do anything. You know, and this is a good moment to tell parents, stop spoiling those children. There, there are things that you can have in your home when you, while you are gone They can go and grab a banana, eat an apple, put something in the microwave. No. You know what they do? They call, Mom, I'm hungry. What if you go and pick us something to eat? But 
mother says, there is something in the refrigerator. I don't want to. I don't know how to use the microwave. That's why our society it is the way that it is. Don't make that mistake yourself with your spouse, with your parents, with anybody. Everybody should be able to be self-sufficient and independent. There is the Lord Jesus walking. He is totally grateful that the disciples are with him. He is grateful. He is happy. He enjoys their company. He is training them. He is on, a, on an assignment. But the disciples, being hungry, they needed to figure out what to do. Well, they were walking through the fields of wheat. The grain fields. We don't know who the owners were. But I mean, how many pounds of wheat, raw wheat, a human can eat. <laughs> Whoever was the owner probably said, that's okay. The point, my friend, is that you will advance in life when you keep walking and moving forward. Second, the Lord knows about your needs, but He is watching how you handle your own situation. Because if you are lazy... If you don't want to move forward, if you say you are stuck, but you don't want to do one thing, even when that thing is just to go to the computer and research whatever is what you need, make a phone call, send a text message to somebody that can help you. If you don't want to do the minimum, let me tell you, you're not going to go, to go anywhere. Much less in ministry. Forget about it. But the Lord is watching us. He sees us when we are lazy. He sees us when we, we have the stuff there. There is an apple there in the kitchen counter. Just wash it. Cut it with a knife and start eating. That's what they did. And sometimes, you know what? We have to do what we have to do. Think about this. What would you do if you are hungry for real and you are walking through a field of wheat? Now that you read about this, are you going to tell me you are not going to start taking all the grain and chewing it? What would you do? Sometimes, what is what they say? When they give you lemons, you make what? Orchata. <laughs> My friend, no. You got to do what you got to do. And sometimes it's not simple, it's not easy, and sometimes it's, it's something that is not ideal. You know, we are so picky in these days, friends, really. And you know jokes and stories about people that only drink this particular type of water. Let me tell you. If there was a catastrophe, those that are so picky about water and food and all that, if it was a catastrophe and they survived, because they are so picky, <laughs> well, they are in this place, particular place, and the only water was this particular water, they will drink it. Sometimes it's not the ideal thing what you have, but you got to do what you got to do, my friend. And the Lord knows that. Now, what can I tell you about the Pharisees? Well, you know, Pharisees are always nosy. They are just putting their hands and nose where it's nothing of their business. And you know what is the first thing they say? You are breaking the law. I was wondering when I was reading this, reading this, I was wondering, that field was not property of any of these Pharisees. I don't think it was because if someone owned that land, oh, probably they will incarcerate the disciples. They are so mean. Probably that, that's what they will do. But no, they, their concern was nothing but the law about the Sabbath, the Shabbat. The criticism of legalistic people. What that has to do with them? Watch the Lord Jesus and his disciples walking through a field, going and eating the wheat has to do with them. Nothing. Nothing. It was not their, their land. It was not their assets. What was the point there? 
But you know what? Our Lord always knows what legalistic people are thinking. Mm -hmm. And in that case, he knew it. So his answer was, don't know, don't you know what David did? Do you know that? Do you remember, guys, what David did? And he goes with the story and mention even the king or priest or whomever was part of the story. Because the Lord knows what legalistic people think and their intentions. I want to tell you something very interesting. Whatever type of situation you are going through is not new on the face of the earth. But this is what is classic among many people. They think their case is unique. Nobody in the whole history of humankind has gone through something like them. <laughs> That's the problem with people that are limited in their knowledge. Because they don't even know many things. Like in this case. The Lord Jesus knew about what happened with David, and so he brought it up. What is your main concern right now, my friend? I know this study is not your main concern. Some of you just are being entertained by me right now. Others are trying to understand what I, what I am trying to say. The spiritual ones watching me are thinking, Teach me, Gian. I want to learn. And they are curious, right? But regardless of this, you are going through certain experiences in life. I promise you that you will find the stories in the Bible related with that particular experience. Whatever is what you are going through. Because there is nothing really new for humans that is not registered in the Bible. That's why one thing you should do constantly, daily, is to read your Bible. And it's a great thing to, to, to read the books in the Old Testament, to hear the stories of the prophets and the kings and the patriarchs. Also to read the stories in the book of Acts. Real apostles. <laughs> you know what? The Lord Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he just stopped them and said, You know what, guys? I am the Lord of the Sabbath. That is what he says. Because our Lord Jesus is greater than a day and greater than a building. So, for those that are talking to you about the importance of doing this particular meal on Friday night, that you have to be on Saturday in this particular temple, and on and on and on, that we know many of them, you know, the letters of the Apostle Paul to the Galatians, to the Colossians, they are filled with all type of warnings to believers, telling them, be careful with those people that are trying to impose the law on you. Celebrations, going to some places, eating these particular foods, or don't eat these particular foods. Woo! You know, we broadcast 24-7. Sometimes on Saturdays, I receive a phone call. Someone calls the church. I speak with these people. I always return phone calls to the church. If it's not me, somebody else will help me. We take care of all the phone calls, emails, and all that. <laughs> so, quite often there is someone on Saturday calling, asking me if we will have service on Shabbat. And I say, my friend, we have one formal meeting on Sunday morning. So you don't have anything on Shabbat? And I said, oh, yes, I do. Today is Saturday. It's Shabbat, right? Yes. So I am here serving the Lord. 
I am here worshiping the Lord. So you have a service in the church? No. I don't have a formal get-together. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to serve the Lord on Saturdays. Because the Lord, the Lord God, is the Lord of Saturdays and Sundays and Mondays and Tuesdays and every single day of the week. So what difference does it make if we have the service on Sundays? And then here we go. They get furious with me because I offended them by not having a service on Saturday. And usually the answer they give me is, well, I am looking for a church that does the service on Saturday. Well, have a good day. And I say, by the way, we broadcast 24-7. Because the Lord is Lord of every day, greater than any day, and greater than any building. So the, the worship, the adoration, the praises, and the service to our good Lord here in Victory Church Odessa is all the time. There you go. The Lord knows what the Pharisees are thinking. And uh, basically, this is what he says. You don't have a clue what is the meaning of mercy and no sacrifices. Because if you knew, you would not be criticizing and judging all those who work hard to reach out the lost ones. What was the intention, my friend, of the Lord Jesus and the disciples walking through the fields, going somewhere? What was the intention? To reach out. To share the gospel. But legalistic people are going to find anything to criticize those who are working hard. Well, Gian, but you are not having a worship service on Saturday. Hey, Gian, you are not wearing a suit and a tie. Really? Uh, any other objection? Your accent. Your English. Mm -hmm. Do you have also an objection about my hair? Or my smile. What else? Too much, too much online, Gian. Jokes, stories for kids. You don't have anything to do with your life. You don't have a life. That is why. No, my friend, I do have a life, and it's a beautiful life. The Lord has blessed me with many wonderful things. But one of the things that the Lord gave me is the assignment to reach out. Now, people are going to criticize me because I'm doing this or doing that. The thing is, legalistic people will argue the fact that I don't have a service on Saturday or because I am eating shrimp or bacon Or because I have a polo shirt instead of a suit and a tie. I don't have a rope and a collar. Really? Pharisees. Legalistic people. That's what they are. Just criticizing. Criticizing whom? Themselves? No, oh no, they don't criticize themselves. They criticize those that are working hard. Because I can tell you this, my friend. We work hard here in this church. Hard. Non-stop. Me, my team, we don't stop. The whole purpose is to reach out, save souls. What is what the disciples and the Lord Jesus was, were doing there in those fields with grain? They were trying to save the lost ones. What do you think we are trying to do and accomplish through our broadcast, my friend? ratings, to get paid, you are mistaken. You don't even understand then what's the purpose of the gospel and the function of ministers. What is the meaning of the Great Commission? It's just the criticism that comes from legalistic people. They are mistaken. But I will tell you something else. Believers want God Not just to shut up the Pharisees. They want God to shut up the mouth of all their adversaries. 
Oh, yeah. Tell him, Gian. Tell him, Gian. Because that's what God will do with our adversaries. Well, they are also wrong. Especially those believers that are so selfish. The only thing that they care about is their own stomachs. Believers need to be focusing in the kingdom, on the kingdom of God. Worshiping God, serving God. But no, they want to triumph, they say. They want to conquer, to show an example. No, it's not to show an example. It's, the purpose is not even to, to witness to others. It's all that they want is more money. I want God to sh shut the mouth of those adversaries of mine. Well, no, the Lord is not going to do that for you. Just because you want to have a better job or another company or whatever. No, my friend. But when believers are working hard to expand the kingdom of God, that is when silence will come to those opposing the work of the servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord God is going to do something to stop those that are just criticizing. Are you with me? The Lord Jesus said one day. Or you are against me. Now, what to do? If you are one of these four types of persons. What if you are an unbeliever? Let's say you don't believe. You have never given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. What do you do right now? Repent. Because today you can die. And if you die, you're going to go to hell. If you are not a believer, that's the destiny. There are just two options. And I cannot sugarcoat this, my friend. It's simple. You are with the Lord or against the Lord. You are in the light or in the darkness. You are going to heaven or you are going to hell. If you are not a believer, today you need to repent and open your heart. Ask for forgiveness to the Lord God. And He will bless you with the forgiveness of your sins. All that you have to do is say, I admit it, I confess. I'm sorry, Lord God. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Please forgive me. Simple as that. The Holy Spirit comes inside of you and then is when you begin to walk. Now, let's say you do are a believer, but you are very judgmental. What is what you do, my friend? Well, you better stop it. Stop it. Don't judge anybody else. Stop judging the rest. Let them be. Maybe people are not acting the, in the best way possible, reaching out or preaching or whatever, but at least they are doing something. In the church, maybe those individual singer are, singing are not the greatest singers in the world. Maybe the, the guy playing the drums or the guitar or whomever, they are not that great and it's annoying to you, but at least they are doing something. Stop judging them. Stop judging them. When you are judging others, you are just hurting yourself. But on the other hand, if you are the type of selfish believer that the only thing that you care about is your own stomach, you need to change, my friend. You need to change. You know, the Lord is going to reward you based on your works, but not works to make money, works towards the kingdom of God. And finally, if you are a servant of God, I will tell you, keep working and listening to our Lord's instructions. Be accountable to a pastor. And keep doing the good job. This was episode 93 of Gospel Parallels. I thank you for being here. And I want to invite you, my friend, to connect with the rest of our platforms here. You can watch more videos on Facebook, as you know. Vimeo is the next category platform. The advantage of Vimeo is there are no commercials, not like with YouTube. On YouTube, you will have ads. That doesn't happen on Vimeo, but it's pretty easy to use. However, on YouTube, also we have podcasts. And for those who like to listen only, I suggest you connect with Victory Radio 24-7. Also, we are in Amazon Music, Pandora. For those who like satellite music, if you have one of those programs in your vehicle, iHeartRadio, we are there as well. And naturally, the podcast is available for everyone. 
Recently, we have developed TV apps available for you. If you have an Apple TV device, find us there. Also, if you have a Samsung TV, if it's a new one, no older than 22, you will also be able to download Gian TV. And as well, you can do it with Roku TV and Amazon Fire Stick TV. All those are resources available for you. And with this, I close wishing you a beautiful rest of your day.